Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Schiavoni. Um, I'm with uh, Snake Hill Web Agency down in Baltimore. Um, I started off as a artist and found myself as a programmer and uh, involved down in the Drupal community down our way in Baltimore and DC. Um, with the, we have a meetup uh, the second Wednesday of every month uh, down in Fells Point, which is a, our waterfront community. And uh, we also have a, a camp coming up this fall, um, probably be the last weekend in September, but we're waiting to confirm that. Um, also, I'm involved with Drupal for Gov, which is a nonprofit that um, that uh, oversees uh, Drupal GovCon, the second largest camp in the um, is it the world or the country? Something like that. It's right behind Bad Camp, and uh, this year it's July 31st to August 2nd. Highly recommend coming down for that. It's a lot of government people, but uh, you know a lot of. Uh, stuff that applies in a lot of other cases, and education, other verticals, uh, a lot of good speakers, and it's free, <clears throat> which is uh, very helpful. So, um, <clears throat> let me jump in. Or not. So, um, the reason why I wanted to talk about uh, the media module is um, the um, hours I've spent over the past year or so um, configuring and, and working with the media module. Um, a friend of mine, a poet friend of mine, uh, uh, pointed me to this quote from John Keats. He's talking about negative capabilities. It's about being out of your comfort zone or maybe even a uncomfortable and um, using that to spur creativity. So this is my way of taking some of my hair pulling and trying to turn it into something positive, um, both with uh, configuring and setting up uh, media and through all its changes over the past couple of years, um, and also trying to explain to clients why we're doing it that way. And, and, um, and really digging in and hoping that out of this and the discussion here today that uh, I, we can contribute to some documentation and help, help move media along. There we go. All right, so uh, how many people have already used the media module in some case? Yeah. So it's, it's been out there for a while, uh, Drupal 7. I, th I think, though, for non-technical people, I don't think we often make the case for the use of media module, and we we probably don't, or quite often don't um, make full use of the capabilities that are there or are about to be there. Um, so a lot of us and a lot of end users are used to putting in images often in through the WYSIWYG as much as we try to get away from that by uploading a file to the file server and creating an image link um, as above and then adding, you know, adding some styles usually with the IMCE tool. Um, well, that's that's sort of the standard paradigm. It's been there for quite a while. It's been hard to move past that. Um, so hopefully, um, as we see, you know, what's wrong um, is with a large site, you end up with a lot of files on the file system, media resources that we can't track. We have no idea how to track. And I'm sure you've had the experience of browsing a file system on a server or a website and you've got, you know, dozens of the same picture there because it, it wasn't repurposed. So, it, you know, image underscore zero, under, underscore one. And they just keep proliferating and taking up disk space. And there's no way to tell 
whether there's there's a still a link to that resource or not, or you know, what is it doing there? Can I get rid of it? Can I remove it? Um, so um, the old paradigm, that's what we ended up with. We've seen it a bit. Um, there's really no way to, to manage those file resources in an efficient way. Uh, but, you know, end users like it that way. They're used to that. They can, they can uh, put their image tags in. They're kind of used to that. So it's, it's really important, I think, for us to, as media matures and we want to utilize uh, the tool more, is to make some arguments for it. So... Um, so what is media? And I, I don't think um, <clears throat> I don't think the definitions up on Drupal.org or on the project page or anywhere in the documentation really do a good job for a layperson to understand what media it is, what media is doing. So it's a basically an index card that keeps track of a file resource, right? Uh, or at least that. For me, that, that seems to be a, a decent um, uh, way of describing it. So once we have that index card in our database and we can track the usage, where it's being used, uh, we can manage the file assets, clean up uh, file assets that are no longer being used, reduce the, the file system clutter, and get, get closer to a more manageable situation. Uh, with using uh, images and video and, and all sorts of uh, media tools. Now, as media has matured, um, it it's, there's been a lot of changes over the over the years. Um, it's not always clear what's what. Um, during the Drupal seven days, um, I think the big change there was moving to entities. And uh, now in Drupal 8, we talk about bundles. So basically, that's a um, collection of data um, that may or may not have a display. Um, and at, now that media is a bundle, um, you can add fields to it. We can have logic uh, added to it. Um, we can uh, control the display uh, according to context. And we have a lot of great tools to work on media, or great tools that, that have been there. And uh, as I'll go in later, um, you know, the, with all the changes there, um, some of these aren't always available for the version we're working with. But we're able to crop, end users are able to crop images, to resize them, they have filters for brightness, color shifts, watermarks. Um, and different and different abilities, capabilities that are are um, are there. But there are, there are barriers to adopting media. Um, in the last uh, dot release, eight point four of um, of Drupal, I'm sure you know, uh, they brought in the media API, and uh, the whole ecosystem is playing catch up with that. And uh, I don't know who has tried to install media on an 8.4 instance of Drupal. Yeah, successfully? No. All right, so, yeah. so I was hoping by the time of this presentation that uh, I would have more success with it too. Um, and the documentation, you've, yeah, I'm sure you've been pulling your hair out and looking at the documentation, like it, it says what to do there, and, and you go to the different um, modules for it, and they seem to have a 2.x release, and that should be able to use the 8.4. Um, but that, that definitely is a barrier. Um, it, you know, it's, I find with clients, um, once they see their new Drupal site and there's this thing called media, um, uh, there's a lot of resistance to it. It's like, well, why can't I FTP my files up to the server? And, you know, I, just crazy things that you hear are not so crazy. IMC definitely um, is still very reliable and works great. So 
there might be instances where where that might be appropriate. Um, and some of the cool tools that uh, that would really justify media aren't quite um, they're in flux as well because of the dot release. So uh, one thing that that has been confusing with media is where things are located and trying to make sense of 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 that all. If you've worked with it, you've you've learned this already, but um, it's starting to make more sense. Uh, so under structure, we have all our media bundles. Um, here you see <coughs> some bundles that um, other modules have created, um, like the media image module and uh, media document, um, Instagram, uh, Twitter, different different uh, modules that provide bundles, which is a collection of, of uh, fields. Uh, it's actually creating the index card for us to track uh, media. But then way over on the other side of the um, uh, admin interface is we under configuration, we have uh, entity browsers to configure, which is how we select uh, the media, and I guess it, it makes sense to have it under content authoring there. Um, and there are um, modules that would provide these, or we can set up our own. Um, and then under uh, media and the configuration menu, you have image styles, um, which <coughs> aren't directly related to media, but they're associated with images and can be used in um, setting up displays. So um, here's the basic steps for setting up media. <coughs> As I said, um, setting it up in the latest uh, point release of Drupal is problematic right now. Um, and so I would recommend um, if you're dealing with a, a new site or um, lucky enough to still be on a, a lower version of Drupal, um, but that's probably the best way to do it. Um, I'm not sure what people are doing with 8.4, whether maybe there's somebody out there who actually has had some success. Um, but the general rule there is the um, modules associated, these are the basic modules that you need, um, media entity, um, and Excuse me. I've had uh, most success um, on uh, 3.x to uh, use the latest dev releases of, of media entity and entity browser, um, and then uh, use uh, um, always use the 1.x branches for um, anything under under Drupal 8.4. And then in Drupal 8.4 and above, the idea is that we all be using the 2.x branches of these uh, modules. And there, there was a point, um, probably about a year ago, where you could just type in Drush uh, enable media and it would work. Um, but it's gotten complicated, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, a nice tip is that um, default, the default uh, formatter, the thumbnail doesn't have an alt tag, so there is a module that will help help uh, add that for you. So, as I mentioned, there are some modules that will create the bundles for you, which are great. If um, so, these are these are all the ones that are out there, and you can get an idea of um, where things are going here and uh, how all-encompassing this media, the media module uh, can be. Um, anything from Google Docs to other content types to uh, uh, file assets on the, um, on the server, uh, video, and also from uh, third-party social media sites, managing all those assets. So the, the browsers are what the end user sees when they create, they're creating their content 
they want to navigate and uh, browse uh, media on this on files on the server or uh, browse media of the different types through the browser or upload or edit or create um, other um, pieces of media to use. Um, these are all, uh, there are modules, these are all the modules that will supply um, browsers, but you can also set up your own so that when you uh, bring up the dialog box and you have an upload tab, a view tab, you can have multiple tabs for different kinds of things there. Um, and uh, you can also have some, some of these modules that incorporate drag and drop and some other JavaScript uh, front ends uh, for the media dialog. You say you can also set up your own uh, um, entity browser in the system under configuration, uh, content editing, and uh, and. Uh, media browsers. Um, so and there's basically four steps and it's a sort of a stepped, uh, um, it's a stepped uh, process where you're just giving some general information, you're selecting a widget um, and then um, then at the very end you're, you're kind of compo you're composing the tabs that are included on the uh, dialog box. You're also Defining the behavior of the dialog box. It might not be a modal box. It might be, uh, you might be using inline entity form or a, a embedded interface right in the content type to add your media. So maybe I'll show some of that. So, under here. You can see we've got our entity browsers. And these have all been supplied by uh, a couple of different modules there. And we could go in and set these up. And it's, like I say, it's a step process. So you kind of have to go through all the steps or um, you know, in the default theme, you can actually switch over, get over to the widgets, you can affect the size of the, the dialog box, and here are all the tabs on this particular uh, browser. Um, so, quite a few tabs there. So, when the user goes in and creates content, can actually select some files, um, browse what's already up on in the system. Uh, select those. And what you're viewing here is the complete entity with the configured um, display of the image. So this is where it, it kind of gets confusing and you have to get used to this. Um, let's say if this is an image type, important things here is when you, when you set it up, um, when you set up the bundles, to make sure you go into your form display and define uh, that what this is using a, a image widget uh, crop and then setting up some other configurations here to affect the behavior. Um, there we go. That's your one. The screen is so dark. Um, I have a, a question. Sure. How do you set up multiple crops for, I mean like, so I feel like with the media bundle, um, you kind of kind of say, yeah, I want all my images, but sometimes you want certain images to only have certain crops. So then I feel like you run into the problem where you have to create a different media bundle because that image has a different crop that you don't necessarily want the user to have to, essentially, you don't want to force the user to crop something that you don't need it to crop. 
Does that make sense? Right. Do you want the user to crop it on the fly or on predefined? The, depends, depends on, like, you know, like, let's say I have, like, a landing page and they have a banner, for example. We don't want to provide them with every cropping um, that's available. We want to only give them certain cropping uh, image styles. I feel like there's no really good solution with the new yeah. media setup for that other than just, like, you have to start creating kind of like unique media bundles for those instances because there's only one image field. Uh, right, right. Uh, so um, how do you come across that? Um, no, I haven't. I could see the, the, the need for that. Um, so the media crop, um, you can actually crop the image. Um, so you could give them this widget here, and there's even a um, there's even a, a module that will that you can define the center, which is really cool. So they can crop it and say if there's a person in the photo. You make sure the person is in the center, <coughs> which is which is kind of neat. It's called focal focal point. Yeah, focal point. So um, I think that works with the uh, image styles. But here you're here you're doing the crop. I apologize, it's kind of dark, but um, and then you can <coughs> crop your image. Um, here we do have alternative text. Um, and there, you know, so we can affect it that way. I don't know of a way where they could select uh, like the pre-selected, but if you're if you a programmer could supply that, you know. And I'm not, not sure if there's a module out there that would do it. That would be a good module to have. Um, there is another related talk at the that's a more uh, programmer oriented later today. Uh, I forget when it is. But um, you know, let me see. I'm not sure when it is, but later today, um, there's a related talk that, that you might want to go to if you're interested in, in digging in and programming some of this stuff. Um, so there, there are other um, widgets or browsers available. Um, here are some of them. Here, um, mostly JavaScript type. Uh, any browser is the basic one, and then Drop Zone, you know, is exactly what it sounds like. And uh, Slick Media uh, provides a little more integration with the Slick slideshow. So there, are, there are some things out there um, that in Versions um, that that you can uh, configure with uh, Drupal eight versions below eight point four will work. Um, so the, the site we we're looking at is like eight eight point three five, I believe. So. Um, so we also had, we just looked at a, a media field. And there are some things to um, look out for when you're setting up the field, right? The, the, a lot of these interfaces um, don't have great user experiences. So when you're, um, when you're adding the field, you might be tempted to add a field of type media or type file, and uh, that just doesn't work. So you got to get type other. So that's how you get past that, that bit. And then you do have to select your bundle. So your bundle has to exist um, uh, before you, you uh, add your field. So you have to have some kind of bundle to associate uh, the field with. You can save the field and go back and add it later. So that at least, at least you don't hit a dead end. Um, that's too bad. Um, and then you always have to remember to um, configure that form display or else you won't get. If you don't configure it with a media browser, you're not gonna you, you're not gonna get that 
nice interface to uh, to uh, grab, to browse and to grab uh, video um, media assets. Um, and then the view display, it's not going to display as an en entity unless you specify render rendered entity in the view display. Just some uh, general kind of guidance there through that process. Um, media in the WYSIWYG it works pretty good. Um, we um, not too bad. Um, I can't tell which buttons I'm hitting. I hit the right one. So you do get the browser right there and you can pick one, select and you'll get the display right in the um, you can set the alignment and you'll get it right in the busy way, which is great. I know, you know, we're all we've been trying to get away from images in WYSIWYG because end users are not designers necessarily. Um, but, you know, it's a, also a difficult argument to make with a lot of clients. So the steps for setting up uh, media in the WYSIWYG is the uh, install the entity embed module. Uh, you can create your own button. There are modules that will provide that for you, but then you can change the icon. You can uh, change some basic settings in there, where um, what uh, browser it's going to use to grab the uh, media, and then you want to define a display to use inside a WYSIWYG area. So uh, that's what I got for today. Um, yes. So uh, if you if you are using the media thing in in the WYSIWYG, is it still like sourceable? How you, like with the card? Is it? Can you view the source? No, like you know how how like in the beginning you were saying like it creates like an index card right. that you can track where the image is being used. If you put it into the WYSIWYG editor, can can you still do that? Yes, it'll tell you where <coughs> the uh, images are being used. Oh. It also has a um, in later versions of Drupal and Media also has a cleanup process. So uh, images that have been abandoned you can set it to automatically clean them up. And actually, the default setting is, is kind of scary. I think it's like a week or two. So it's a good one to visit because you know suddenly you're going to have media disappearing off your site. Um, so you, you might want to go to that. That's a, that's a good gotcha that you want to get to uh, earlier rather than later. Um, I think that's how I discovered it. It's like, where are things going? Do we have any more questions? Uh, any other experiences that people want to share? Has any has really has anybody gotten it to work in eight dot four? I think so. Have you? Oh, I was testing for. I was just playing with the sandbox last week. But I think I had to install media. I don't think I was using the core media. Right. So you did it the, um, the old way. The yeah. So I've tried it both ways. I swear I've gotten it going the old way with the 1.x series of modules, but uh, it also might be an upgrade, so I think I've successfully upgraded to that point, too. So I have a question related yes. to that. What's, what's going to happen if, say, you have it set up under 8.3 and you go to 8.4, you're going to have to totally rebuild your... No, there will be... Well, there, all the documentation says there will be a, a upgrade path for all the different modules. What's, I think what the tricky thing that's happening is that the the old um, the, um, media entity module is a lot of that functionality and that and media are in the media API core. So everyone's got to adjust to using the API in core instead of calling out to these other contrib modules. And I think that <coughs> That's a big piece that <clears throat> seems to be taking a long time. 
I know they were working on it in Baltimore. I was at the table for a while. And it was, um, and it seemed like they made a lot of progress in Baltimore. And then, it, you know, it stopped and starts. And we have 8.5 coming out really soon, like in a couple of weeks, right? Within a couple of weeks. So um, I know at the coding lounge, uh, <coughs> some people are working on some getting, scrambling to get code ready for 8.5. Don't know the um, whether um, the media status will change much in 8.5. Hopefully, it will. Um, and I would encourage people to, um, you know, and there's many ways to contribute. So, uh, coding is the more obvious one, but uh, documentation because there's a lot. The documentation is really falling behind. So, helping with that. Uh, even helping with the testing, you know, putting issues in the issue queue. When you do find something broken, just don't, you know, open an issue um, or, you know, look for the issue first and then open it. I think that's a big help for people to know that things aren't working right. Um, but it seems like we have, there are two initiatives right now that are real bottlenecks for Drupal, and media is one and layouts is the other. So and they're it's a they're both very big paradigm shifts and very aggressive with uh, the, what kind of functionality they're trying to provide. Um, and it's been really interesting to see how the point the, the dot releases have been working over the past uh, since eight has come out. Anybody else? All right, great. Well, thank you, and I hope you enjoy your day.